Ken the Design, Steve Fall. In today's edition, we are talking about the stoppage of tyranny in the world with Manso and Mason. Matt, look at those muscles. Look at those muscles. These are muscles that can stop colonialism, brother. My God, you have gone viral again. It seems to be a tradition with both of you, but soft ground wrestling, you have stopped tyranny once again. How did the hell this even get going? Who contacted you to come there and stop Lord White? Well, uh, we wanted to stop Lord White ourselves, but uh, they actually contacted us. At, I think I just retweeted one of their posts, um, just a little bit of support on my end. And I found somebody in my DMs that reached out to me and says, hey, if you ever want to do anything with us or around us, please let us know. We'd be happy to have you. And uh, the, as we found ourselves on this tour of Europe in the Middle East, we figured we're never going to be closer to Uganda than right now. No. We have a week. There's there's one opportunity to do this. And you ever watch uh, an extremely goofy movie? <laughs> yes. There's like a classic. A, there's like a song in that where, where, where Max is like, like talking about how they're going to do something and either they'll be legends or they'll be suspended. And it's like, we're either going to do this and make a fuck ton of noise and like get everybody's eyes on us or we're going to go and just wrestle in mud and then just never come home. <laughs> which almost <laughs> happened. Which almost um, happened because all our flights got canceled on the day we were supposed to leave. And we ended up traveling for 30 hours in the same clothes we wrestled on the soft ground ring and unwashed. But mm. I will say this. Despite all the travel issues, it was 100% worth it because we got to meet the most passionate and uh, fans and, and, and wrestlers that we've ever met. And just found the purest love for the sport and art of professional wrestling that we have ever seen in anywhere that we've ever been. And in this village of Makono, Uganda, where 100 kids are learning how to wrestle. Many of them are orphans and they have nowhere else to go. And that is the family and the community that they have. Just a shared love for what we do. And it, it, it's so heartwarming and, and fills our hearts to see people so passionate about what we've committed our lives to. Because it's so easy, especially when we were in WWE, it's so easy to feel so bitter and resentful about this sport and this art. But when you see people who do it just to do it because they love it, it just reminds you why we do it. So, And I, and I think that's kind of why it's resonated so much uh, with people online now that it is out. It's just because it's just a pure positive moment of uh, us sharing our love with their love and combining it to make something special and make a special moment for these kids who uh, don't get a lot. So, uh, which is why we're pretty passionate now about trying to help them get as much as we can get them. That's amazing to hear. Are they aware of how passionate everyone else is about them? Uh, many wrestlers from all companies are very aware of what they're doing out there. Are they aware that the world is watching? They are. They're uh, a lot of them are on Twitter, as, yeah. as we found now. We keep. I got a message from Cool Man today saying that, "Hey, bros, I miss you." <laughs> <laughs> he's, so sweet. he's so sweet. He put out a tweet where he said he was self conscious about his height because he met us and he was like, "Oh no, I'm short." <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, "Brother, thank you for making me look tall. I stand next to this jackass every day, and I look so short." Um, they're all they're all amazing, and it, it's one thing to see the reaction on Twitter. Because seeing the numbers is great, but I'm so happy that we were able to go and hopefully more wrestlers in the future go because to actually see each other and be in the presence of each other and to wrestle each other is an entirely different experience. And these guys know everything. They consume all of it. They consume WWE, AEW, New Japan. They like are so well aware of everything that's going on. And they, that's like, they almost just parrot stuff at you. Because they're like, oh, I remember when this happened. I remember this, or yeah. when you did this. So it's- They posed, they were posing They were posing at us. <laughs> they're doing the poses? Oh, say, it's Ben Yeah. Oh I was my like, God. holy shit, you guys may be the only fans of that. <laughs> yeah. No, there's plenty of people no, out there right. doing you're that right. in the world. Right. No, you're right. It's true. It's true. Just because beyond. it's awesome. Now, are they- I know there was something going on where people wanted to give them a wrestling ring, but obviously it's hard to get to them in a location. Is that a goal of theirs to get a ring instead of wrestling on the soft ground? That is exactly their issue. Uh, I think they do have the ring finance. They uh, were generously donated a, a healthy sum of money by Will Ospreay uh, to get a ring there. But uh, unlike in The Sims, a uh, ring doesn't just magically appear when you buy it. So um, it, there's uh, there's taxes. It needs to be actually shipped. It's a big, it's a lot of wood. It's a lot of metal. 
Um, so we are actually part of what we're doing is trying to get some of the taxes cleared for them so that they can get that ring. Um, one of the things we told them is that a, a big part of the essence, what makes them special and uh, what makes them stand out from what they do is the fact that they compete in the soft ground, is the fact that they have basically the soil of Africa imbued into the DNA of this company. Um, but it's ve it's definitely going to be very good for them to actually have a ring for the sake of safety, for the sake of training. But um, yeah, I, it's, it's, I don't know if it's soft ground without the soft ground. That's what I was going to say. The name of the promotion is soft ground wrestling. And listen, I'm also concerned about the safety of those kids, but after bumping on the soft ground, it's not that bad. It's really not that bad. <laughs> if you if you hose that shit down, if you if you if you water it and then till it like we did, we were putting a hoe to the, that dirt. We were yeah. we were back on ring crew after all these years. We had to build the ring. And then we were bumping on it, and we were like, "This isn't this isn't horrible. This is fine." I mean, I bumped in worse rings. So wow, me, really? It's yes, at one hundred percent. I've I've taken bumps and rings and felt like I'll never stand up again. But I was I was jumping on dirt, landing on dirt, and I was like, "This isn't that bad." Um, what I would say is that like for soft ground wrestling to permanently move to a ring would be a lot like TNA going to four sides <laughs> instead of six. <laughs> you lose the essence, you know what I mean? So yeah. I think that a ring is good to have for training because at the end of the day, these kids want to be in AEW, WWE. They want to show up in professional wrestling companies around the world that obviously don't operate on dirt. But at the same time, I think still make those videos with, with, with the soft ground ring because I think that's what made people perk up and look and say, oh my God, what are these guys doing? Yeah. It's so different. It's so unique. And in professional wrestling, we say all the time, the best thing you can be is different. The best thing you can be is unique. So I'm of two minds about it. Um, we're going to do our best to get the ring there anyway. And uh, I, as we're going to talk about, we have quite a few uh, ways to, to help soft ground. They're in desperate, desperate need. Uh, I can go into it now if you don't mind. Yeah, go for it, man. Of course. So uh, basically, a lot of the wrestlers at Soft Ground Wrestling are, are actual, they're shoot orphans. Like, they call them orphans in the tweets, but they're legit. You know, they, they, they don't have families. We had no idea. No, we thought it was just like a little like, oh, WWE calls the wrestlers superstars. Well, Soft Ground Wrestling, we're the orphans. No, they're, right, right. they're orphans. Yeah. Um, they sleep on the floor of the facility. They don't own the land. They rent it out. Uh, the landlord The landlord wants to start a sugar cane plantation on the land. And um, the Soft Ground Wrestling founder, uh, Bumbash, he has to pay the landlord. And actually, the GoFundMe that occurred uh, a, a couple of months ago helped them get the lease up to December. So we need funds for um, them to extend the lease on the land so they can continue to train and perform. They need funds for food. Uh, they need funds for beds. And if we can, if we can get a stretch goal, depending on how much we can raise, a van or a minibus would be awesome because a lot of people in Uganda don't have the means of transportation to go and watch these shows. Uh, that's why the crowd is mostly just the students and the wrestlers themselves. Yeah. So we want to be able to take them on the road across Uganda to uh, to basically share their art and their love for pro wrestling. Man. Yeah. Thank you so much for all, all you're doing so far, because obviously the goal is to continue this journey for them and having you guys involved with your star power brings more eyeballs to it as well, because obviously – it's hard to imagine a world where you think, oh, they're having fun, they're wrestling in a ring, but you know, we're, not, we're not seeing what's behind that camera right. of what happens after right. the excitement that we're watching. I watched a man powerbomb another person in the the river just a yes. few minutes yeah, ago. I, mean, I just saw that, yeah. I was like, I was like what, what's happening? This is amazing. <laughs> and you're right about the ring too, because the whole essence is the soft ground. We're wrestling on the ground, but give him a ring, well, you know, throw some mud in the ring, I guess, too. To make the yeah, ring. Yeah, shovel uh, on some dirt. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, do it. Just, just um, do it. Do it. it That's amazing you're doing that. It's one thing to see the numbers on the tweets because they love seeing how much love and support they get from the fans on the internet. But uh, unfortunately, and we tried to do this while we were there, we wanted to get them subscribed to Twitter Blue so that they could make money off of their posts, right? We were telling them, you guys get so many views and engagement, you could easily get paid for this and it would sustain you know, your lease. And unfortunately, in Uganda, they can't subscribe to Twitter Blue uh, because they uh, don't Accept the form of payment. Elon Musk, a famous African, uh, <laughs> sends money to Africa. <laughs> yeah, it's very sad. So even with like how much attention and love and views they get, they're still they're still not making money off of that. Uh, so that's precisely why we are, are trying to pay it forward because they graciously hosted us. I mean, um, we're actually the second act to come by from uh, outside Uganda. Shima came by and, and wrestled with them, and we were there like a week later. And I hope, I hope that more wrestlers can come by and teach them and impart something with them and just be a part of this amazing thing. They're on the ground floor 
of starting something amazing and completely and totally new. And I'm so incredibly proud of them. And and, and like Mason is talking about, we're proud to just be a part, a little piece of part of that that can help them on their way. It's a very unique experience to be able to bring something new to a place where it hasn't been before. Uh, professional wrestling does not exist in East Africa specifically. Um, it is something where they are actually uh, building the foundation for what professional wrestling can be in this continent, right? And that's, you know, Lucha Libre has been around for hundreds of years. Uh, strong style wrestling is something that's existed for decades upon decades. But this is something completely new. And to play just a tiny, tiny bit in maybe if we could spark more people going over there, teaching them, because basically what they've learned is literally just copy and pasting what they've seen on TV. Uh, and they, yeah. And they, there was a guy, he did the... He did the the spear. I was like, brother. (laughs) And what's uh, what's really amazing is because they are so perceptive and they're able to just take the little things that they see on TV and apply it because they're such great athletes. But uh, when you actually do give them input, Mansoor was actually teaching them just how to do uh, strikes so that you don't actually kill your opponent with your strikes. And Mm. they picked it up instantly. 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 Like, I know professional wrestlers in America that can't do that. Yeah. They they see and they do, and it's amazing. Yeah, and that's how they learned. Uh, Bumbash, the founder, he actually, you know, made the money to start soft ground wrestling by hosting pay-per-view watch parties and commentating in their native language. And everybody would just come and, and watch and, and enjoy the show. And he has been watching wrestling for decades, pretty much his entire life. So he was able to teach them just by watching as well. And I think, like I said, like the more wrestlers come, the more they're going to find and hone in on that technique so they can learn more and more. And then they can sort of, you know, reproduce in the sense that they're going to get more students. And those students are going to be taught by people who are taught by wrestlers all around the world. Man, is there a plan for you to return uh, back to the organization? Because right now, where are you right now? We're in Dubai. Dubai. So yes, how have your yeah, how has your here. travel been the past uh, week? Terrible. <laughs> Terrible fucking disaster. We went from soft ground wrestling, we went from wrestling in the mud straight to the airport in Entebbe, right? No shower, no change. We were on our last set of clothes. We thought, okay, well, we're just going to fly back to Saudi Arabia, back to my childhood home. We'll shower, get changed, do laundry. No problem, right? Our flight's at 4.30 p.m. We get to the airport. We wait around. It gets delayed to 11.30 p.m. Okay, whatever. We'll wait some more. It gets delayed to 1 a.m. And then it gets delayed to 5 p.m. the next day. So we thought, well, we can't fucking do that. We've got more shows. (laughs) We have a show to get to. So we cancel that flight. We get a new flight. We go to Dubai. We land in Dubai, which recently had the worst flood it's had since 75 years. Because we're cursed. We're cursed. Congratulations. And... We need to make our connecting flight in an hour. And what happens? They don't have stairs for us to get off the plane. So how long do we have to wait? Two fucking hours for stairs. <laughs> Two no. fucking hours for stairs. I will jump off the goddamn plane if I have to. <laughs> we wait for our stairs. We go down the stairs. We get in a bus to go to the terminal. What happens? What happens to the goddamn bus? It breaks down. I the knew door, it! The doors won't close. And they said, we can't move this bus until the doors close. We miss our flight. Okay, it was supposed to be at 5.30 a.m. We're in the Dubai airport. What do we do? What can we do? Well, we get a new flight. When? 8.30 p.m. (laughs) So we're there for over 12 hours. Left in a pod in our dirty mud wrestling. I was wearing the shorts I wore in soft ground wrestling. Thankfully, I had a shirt. I didn't have to wear my sleeveless tee of the uh, MXM (laughs) SGW crossover shirt, which is available on foryourwear.com. But here we are in Dubai in a hotel room. Washed. Oh. We made it. We made it. And I can say, even with all that, 100% worth it. What an adventure. Yeah. You're telling you me. Know. Yeah. Uh, well, you know, I when I go away on trips a lot, I always tell my kids, I'm like, listen, daddy goes away sometimes, and sometimes it's not fun. But it's an adventure, and I might learn something. So what have you yeah. learned on your journey so far? Uh, bring more clothes on trips, <laughs> underwear. We thought for sure we'd be able to just turn this around. Just, we don't need to travel I'll too just much. Just bring an extra day of underwear, please. <laughs> Always. Please, because you're going to smell. Just, just smell. One of the uh, big more things underwear. for me. Yes, good. What? He's writing it down. I, had to, oh, yeah, I, I was writing down the notes. I want to make sure that, you know, I don't, don't want to forget it. travel. Yeah, you know what? How about, no, don't bring underwear. No, because then you don't have to replace it. If you, you, never if you free ball it. Commando. 
yeah, for yeah. life. Next, and, and if you ever wrestle in the soft ground ring, definitely don't wear underwear. Yeah. You don't wear underwear if you wrestle free. in the soft ground right. ring. All right. There's a lot you I'm learning a lot today. <laughs> Good. I'm, I'm glad. I'm learning so much today. But, uh, you know, I, I do want to bring up that I was about to watch a man pee on another man, and you came and saved the day. Uh, you know, I've watched a lot of wrestling, and I don't remember a storyline involving a man peeing on another man. Vince McMahon pissed his pants. DX peed mm. on the DOA's bikes. But I don't mm. think I've ever seen a man pee on someone else. So you're involved with history making here. Uh, how do you feel about me involved saving the day of a man being peed on? We had the rare opportunity to become uh, creative consultants for soft ground wrestling uh, as we were setting up this event. And, um, you know, we, we try and bring our own personal flair, our own flavor to whatever mm. we do. And uh, sometimes water sports is just uh, the way we roll. We channeled our inner Vince Russo that day. <laughs> and we decided that the more sensational and insane the angle, uh, the more attention it was going to get. I think soft ground wrestling has the opportunity. It's on the precipice of a very Attitude Era-esque style. Oh, That's what I era. told them. I said to the founder, Bombash, I said, listen, people like wrestling, but it only holds their attention for so long. You can only post so many clips of action before people start to go, well, what's happening story-wise? Like, well, we want to see what's happening with the characters. And that's precisely why they have a character like Lord White, who plays a snooty British colonizer, die, come back to life after his grave gets pissed on, and then threaten to piss in the mouth of another man. Because you need to capture people's imagination with both action and story. And the perfect synthesis is found in Mokono, Uganda. How the fuck is that possible? I mean, we have great matches every week. We have great angles every week. But how many shows combine the two? to have incredible uh, death-defying performances along with uh, imagination-capturing storylines. That's phenomenal. We went to Mokono, and we pitched it directly to the founder of Soft Ground that Lord White was going to find a, a hot, fiery young babyface who we could put over to save us and raise his arm at the end of the segment. And we got Cool Man, who's fucking amazing and in incredible shape. and has got natural charisma. Awesome double choke slam. Amazing double sit-out choke slam. Fucking hit it. Huge pop. Everybody in the comments is putting it over. We found him and said, this is going to be the kid that pissed on Lord White's grave. And Lord White is going to get his goons, who we called the White Boys. Yeah. <laughs> and they're gonna we felt like up. Lord White was doing great, but we needed a little bit more. So we, uh, we, well, of course. we, we added the uh, added layer of uh, these other orphans that, you know, should be uh, Cool Man's family, his blood. And uh, they betrayed him for, like, a couple of shillings. That's right. So uh, that uh, made them instant, the biggest heels in the company, really, because there's nothing, there's a special layer of hell. That was those betrayed. kids' debuts. Yes. So we were, they were all standing around the ring, being the crowd, and Bumbash was like, oh, we need white boys. You, you, you. And they all came in the ring, and they were like, yes. Wow. Because this was the first time ever being a part of actually wrestling. And I was like, this is amazing. Like we got to make these kids dream come true by making them a part of this. And now they're learning and getting to like tie up with us. And then they're going to go on and do the same thing with new kids. So that was just a fucking tremendous time. My God. Again, you keep going viral for all the, the right reasons. I think it was last time I remember, remember uh, sexual jokes were suggested. And then suddenly uh, I was like, I'm sorry, what did they just say? They're going to do what to who? And then suddenly you went viral. Now you're going viral again for a whole different reason. A whole well, different reason. it's never going to be for our wrestling. I'll no, it's never going to be for our wrestling. <laughs> no, what are they? They match. wrestle? I did not know I this. Know, I know. This is but, something I mean, new. That's, that's part of the thing is like, like I mean, I've been saying, there's no shortage of good matches, right? Every week on free TV, we get like a five-star match, you know? So what are people looking for to be different? They're looking for these crazy out there things. And if you can back it up in the ring, well, then, you know, all the more power to you. Well, you did it. And uh, it's, again... Everyone's about this. Everyone's excited. And I hope there's, we can find the link to GoFundMe and get this ring and the taxes taken care of because, my God, we need to see more of this and more power bombs in rivers, I think, is needed in wrestling in general. I think bigger and bigger bodies of water. Yes. Uh, oh, actually, yeah. they're, they're very fortunate being in Uganda. They have access to the second largest lake in the world in Lake Victoria. So uh, maybe their big Hell in a Cell type match. Oh yeah, could be a Lake Victoria uh, uh, lunge, uh, like a like a like a bake in the lake. Yeah, <laughs> like a like a what, what's like a good it. word? What rhymes, what rhymes with lake? Uh, shake, shake, shake in the lake. Shake in the lake. Yeah, shake in the lake. Yeah. Which sounds kind of sexual. Have a little shake in the lake. And you did it again. 
That's where you shake Maybe. yourself under the water. Nobody can see. But here's <laughs> how you can support soft ground wrestling. You yes. can go to forurware.com, F-O-R-U-R-W-E-A-R.com, and yeah. buy the MXMX SGW crossover T-shirt. All the proceeds go to SGW. It's also a pretty bitchin' shirt. Mason made it. Graphic design. I'm a bit of a man. graphic designer myself. Also, on May 6th, on twitch.tv slash greatblackotaku, 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, we are going to do the Achieve the Dream stream, where we're going to stream for hours and hours, having surprise guests, where donations are going to come in, and we're going to get as much money as possible. All of it's going to go to SGW, so these kids can continue to learn, they can continue to keep the land, we can get them beds, food, uh, a means of transportation, so that they can, you know, just achieve their dream and continue to wrestle. Well, thank you so much for your time. And go get some sleep. Take another shower if you feel like it because you've earned it. You've earned that extra shower today. But, man, so Mason Madden, thank you so much for being here. I, again, uh, you guys are doing amazing work. And let's get this going. Get him a ring, damn it. Thank you so much for being here. I'm Steve Fall. Have a wonderful day. And we'll see you next time. Bye-bye.